Okay, welcome everyone. I think we're all muted now. I'll mute us all. And then if you'd like to unmute yourselves, um, when, if, if you're taking part, and certainly at the end, then we can chat a bit more if you'd like to stay. So yes, welcome. Happy Christmas, everyone. I know I've said to most people, so happy Christmas. We could all wave to each other. Christmas wave. <laughs> happy Christmas. <laughs> So music um, that we just had playing was called Soli Deo Gloria, and it was written by Darling Zek and um, Dustin Smith and um, somebody Wong, sorry, I haven't written it down, um, and sung by Darling Zek. And it was written 2020, so it's right hot off the press this year. Uh, and um, what else do we need to do? Just thanks for everyone who's... Um, helped in any way to put this service together for Mandy, for Roger, um, yep, and those reading, um, I'll thank in advance, uh, Norman and Margaret. After the service, I say we will have a little bit of time to chat, um, and um, sorry, I was just distracted, the phone's going somewhere, I will, I have to ignore it, sorry. <laughs> um, we will have a little bit of time to chat. We weren't going to breakout rooms this time, but if you do want to stay to chat, we'll just all chat together. That would be really nice. Um, but you'll have to bring your own nibbles, I'm afraid, and your own lovely, yummy, um, hot uh, punch. We're going to begin then. We're going to begin with our Advent liturgy. And it's going to come up on the screen in a minute. Um, and I haven't got anybody else to say the words in bold type. So, but if we all say them where we are. So let's begin. We light all our candles to remind us that the light of Christ burns brightly in the midst of our lives. Every day can be Christmas Day. For the Lord comes to us as he came to Bethlehem. He seeks to be born in us. For the Lord comes to us as he came to Bethlehem. He wants us to come to him like the shepherds. For the Lord comes to us as he came to Bethlehem. He wants to live in and work through us. For the Lord comes to us as he came to Bethlehem. He comes eternally and seeks room in our lives. For the Lord comes to us as he came to Bethlehem. So rest in his presence and be aware of his love. Let his presence be a light in your darkness, a candle in the dark. Un unshare a minute. I light the candles. You know, I'll do it that way. Could we unshare a minute? Yeah. The four candles that we're used to for the four weeks, and then the special Christmas morning. We light the middle candle to remember Jesus the light of the world come into our darkness. Let's pray. The Lord is here. The light of Christ is with us, filling our lives with his glory. May his power enable us to do his will and to serve him. Him whose service is perfect freedom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And so we worship the light of the world come among us as we sing our first carol. O come all ye faithful.
Going to work. Mandy, have we got the um, first carol up? Aha. <laughs>
you. And now we're going to listen to our first reading from Isaiah, which is which Norman is going to read to us. I'm going to spotlight you, if that's okay, and don't forget to turn your microphone off. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder the rod of his oppressor thou hast broken, as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Norman. Right. Um, well, normally, uh, I think I was going to spotlight myself if I can. Hang on a tick. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Um, normally, we have um, some jokes at this point about presents from my uh, book, um, A Stocking Full of Christmas. But actually, I've run out of those jokes. So I'm going to tell some jokes about Santa instead. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear. So... <laughs> um, where do I start? Okay, a little girl climbed onto Santa's lap. Santa asked the usual distance this year, of course. Don't know how they climbed on that, but anyway. And what would you like for Christmas, he said. The child stared at him open-mouthed and horrified for a minute, then gasped, didn't you get my email? And then um, Shirley Temple says, I stopped believing in Santa Claus when I was six. Mother took me to see him in a department store and he asked for my autograph. <laughs> and just one more. Santa Claus has the right idea. Visit people once a year. <laughs> That's quite some fun things. Okay. So has anybody, uh, if we stop spotlighting me for a minute and if any, anybody's got any Christmas presents they want to share, I think uh, some of us saw Henry's. Lovely top earlier. I shall. Yeah. Uh, hang on a tick. Are we all in uh, gallery view now? We can see each other. That's better. I've got a few Christmas presents. One of them is this weird, like, toy thingy. Oh. Weird monster. Um. Another one of them is this Pringles. It's actually a pencil case. <laughs> even though, my grandma, even though my grandma straight away said, "Do you not eat in those?" So she thought it was an actual Pringles packet. I got and I got two Lego keychains. One of them is a guy with a watermelon head, um, and another one is a shark man. Ooh, your favorite is <laughs> and. Um, I also got this um, like action GoPro camera. Wow! And I got a load of other stuff put there in my house. <laughs> That's the thing about not having it in church today, isn't it? You can show all yeah. your presents 
from home. <laughs> okay, thank you. Who else? I think Linda had something, was waving something, or oh, Mandy's waving something as well. Yeah. Go to unmute yourselves, whoever goes first. <laughs> are you there? Okay, then you can go. The sun's shining on my screen now. Very nice. What is that then? Uh, so this is a face mask and oh. some cozy socks, <laughs> which I got for Christmas. Um, also, um, sorry about the first carol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone's, I know Linda's struggling to unmute herself there. <laughs> Anyone else while we're waiting? <laughs> oh, someone else just coming in as well. Okay, I think we might need to give up on that. Um, I haven't got anything this year because I haven't opened anything yet. Ooh. Not to worry. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for those who are able to, to show us something. Oh, Elisa, are you waving as well? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were for a minute. Thank you, Doug. So Christmas isn't... So much, as we know, about Santa giving us presents, uh, gifts, but about God's gift, the gift of God himself coming in Jesus. And I'm going to read a little bit more from the book. Compare Santa to Jesus. So while many people think that Christmas is about Santa, it is really about Jesus. When you consider the differences between Santa and Jesus, not to mention the fact that Santa is based on a Christian saint, the folly is exposed. Considering the following, for example, Santa lives at the North Pole. Jesus is everywhere. Santa comes but once a year. Jesus is an ever-present help. Santa fills your stocking. Jesus supplies all your needs. Santa comes down your chimney uninvited. Jesus stands at the door and knocks and then enters your heart when invited. You have to wait in line to see Santa, but Jesus is as close as the mention of his name. Santa doesn't know your name. All he can say is, hi, little boy or girl, what's your name? But Jesus knew our name before we were even born. He knows our history and future, even knows how many hairs are on our heads. While Santa puts gifts under your tree, Jesus became our gift and died on a tree. It's obvious that there's no comparison. We need to remember who Christmas is all about, to put Christ back in Christmas. Jesus is still the reason for the season. Let's join in praise then of King Jesus as we sing our next song. Come and join the celebration. It's a very special day.
we're now going to have our next reading, uh, which Margaret <coughs> Medill is going to read to us. So if you would unmute yourself and we'll spotlight you. Luke chapter two. <laughs> In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be with enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men, with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. May the Lord bless to us these readings from his holy and most precious word. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> So we've heard the Christmas story from the foretelling in the Old Testament of the light coming in the darkness through to the birth of Jesus and the visit of the shepherds. It's a familiar story that we hear every year and sometimes it washes over our heads and other times we see something in it that we didn't notice before and it gets us wondering and anticipating all over again. I often wonder at the shepherds. They were out in the fields when they were told of the arrival of God's Messiah and heard the heavenly singing. They went to see the newborn baby and were filled with such awe that they went back praising God. Just imagine those shepherds. Shepherds weren't held in very high regard in Israel in those days. They were thought of as dishonest men, not trustworthy, except ten sheep. So it wasn't a brilliant occupation. They spent their nights sleeping rough and their days roaming around finding pasture for the sheep. And yet God chose them to tell of the birth of the Messiah. God chose to give this special message to these shepherds. These people that seem to be not your average citizen that the Saviour was born. 
maybe God knew that they would be receptive, whereas those happily asleep in their warm, comfortable homes would ignore the signs. And those shepherds were excited. It was good news. They hurried down from the hills to look for the baby. They may have had to wake up some innkeepers and farmers to find where the baby was. But when they found him, they crept in quietly, I'm sure, to have a peek at the Christ child. What I find most wonderful about the story is that their lives were changed. I don't mean that they suddenly got better jobs or more income or had a wash every day. But what I mean is they changed as people. The angel's message and seeing the Lord had lit up their lives. They were so excited as they left the manger scene that they went back praising God. And not just that, we hear as well that they spread the word. I guess many would have been sceptical. Their families may have thought they'd been out in the cold too long, gone a bit funny in the head. But there would have been those who realised something had changed about them. Their smiles maybe were gen looked genuine, their message alive. They weren't trying to be like Del Boy conning them or rough round the edges, but telling them the good news of the birth of a baby who is God's saviour, the light in the darkness. That light, that joy of all they saw and heard, must have stayed with them throughout their lives. And that light is with us too. As we think of those moments, we have glimpsed the glory of God in our everyday lives. Those things we have treasured in our hearts, just as Mary did, and just as the shepherds would have done. It doesn't mean our life situations will change, but as Christ changes us, we, like the shepherds, can come away from our meeting with Jesus rejoicing and praising God, and even letting others know about the good news. Amen. And we're going to sing, um, continuing praise of our infant saviour as we sing, Away in a manger, no crib for a bed.
And now we come to just a short time of prayer for our world and for others. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you and give thanks for your birth, your incarnation in Bethlehem, we come to think about our world and ourselves. We think of this time of our own families, giving thanks for them all and asking your blessing on all our family members as we won't be able to see a lot of them this year. We lift them all to you in all our celebrations. And we think especially of those who aren't well at the time, asking that your presence will be with them. And we name them just in a moment's quiet. We pray for those who've been bereaved this year, thinking of so many people who have not been able to uh, grieve properly with funerals being so restricted. All the hopes of having celebrations of their lives later this year didn't materialize either. So we do pray for them all. And we think of those in our world affected by the pandemic, all those in poorer countries, persecuted church often the last on the list for help at this time. We pray you will be with them. We pray too in our world at the moment for all those who are homeless, all those who are lonely. We think of the situation with the truck drivers and pray for them today alone in their cabs, maybe distancing with others, sharing uh, some sort of celebration. And we pray for all those who are out there helping them at this moment in time. We pray too for those affected by the wildfires in California. We pray, Lord, that those who've had to evacuate their homes will find um, good shelter and a uh, good time to keep safe and to celebrate. We gather all our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer in the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we come to sing our final song this morning, our final carol. We lift our voices in praise again. Joy to the world. The Lord is come.
Sorry, I thought I'd unmuted myself then. I'll try again. <laughs> the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be ours this Christmas. Amen. <laughs>